Uh oh, went too far. This is the Troll Patrol. Why? With Justin. Freaking. Welcome to the Troll Patrol. Live. It's a freaking Monday. Warlord, what it do? Clinically insane. Lenny Jr. Love you guys. Mandy, so happy to see you. Porg. Mr. Balls. Trying to make sure I get everybody. Reverse thread. Always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you guys. I'm, I'm trying to trying to make sure I didn't miss anybody. But we've been we've been going for a while now. We just watched the Ohio Senate debate. Let me let me pull up the meme of the day so we're ready to go here. What are we gonna be talking about on tonight's show, you may ask. Unfortunately, I have caught videos. A teen was shot by the cops while he was eating a burger in his car. That one's really gonna make your blood boil. We also have video of a mom who is demanding an apology for the cops from the cops in Virginia after they rammed her car she had nothing to do with the suspect they were pursuing the head of the LA City uh, Council the Los Angeles City Council has had to step down after being caught on audio making racist remarks Also in the racist remark category, the NAACP is condemning Senator Tommy Tuberville for remarks he made at the Trump rally that we watched on Sunday, Saturday. I'm getting days confused now. We've just, we've just been streaming all month. It's political month here leading up to the election on November 8th. We are finding out that Trump tried to blackmail the National Archives. But keeping classified documents, we also have leaked Kevin McCarthy audio, the House uh, Republican leader. I don't know what he what he what he was caught saying, but we'll we'll listen to it together. The hacking group has been targeting airports today. They shut down the website of the Atlanta airport. I believe they did it as a precaution. I don't think the group actually hacked them. We're going to take a look at that story. Biden has two words for you. Any 90s wrestling fans popped for that one. A Law & Order star got into it with Lauren Boebert and Stephen Miller on Twitter. We're going to take a look and see if the military has gone full MAGA. Plus, a right-wing nut job says if God tells you to kill somebody, you should probably do it. All that and more tonight on the Troll Patrol live. Is your meme of the day? Your therapist tells you to pray. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> But starting off tonight, uh, it is what some people, some racist ass people, and there's a theme on tonight's show, it seems. It is what some racist ass people would call Columbus Day. So I would be remiss if we didn't start off by talking about the difference between Columbus Day and Indigenous Peoples Day and the debate that is raging throughout the country. What is Indigenous Peoples Day? Is it offensive to celebrate Columbus Day? I'm going to go ahead and tell you, no matter what the USA Today says, the answer is, yeah, it's it's pretty offensive. Fuck Columbus. So, uh, do we want to watch this video? Let's do it. 
Several states and dozens of cities observe it instead of or in addition to Columbus Day. Talking about Indigenous Peoples Day, a federal holiday since 1937. Critics of Columbus Day claim it overlooks the Italian explorer's history of colonialism and treatment of indigenous people. Based video of a statue being taken down. Some Italian Americans defend the holiday, which they see is tied to their heritage, which I don't understand. On Indigenous Peoples Day, we honor America's first inhabitants and the tribal nations that continue to thrive today. First proposed in 1977, many states celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day under different names. Chainsaw, thank you for being a freaking chains chainsaw. CC, C. Thank you for being a freaking follower. California and Nevada honor Native Americans Day. Tennessee is American Indian Day. Kind of weird because, you know, Columbus called them Indians because he thought he was in India. The second Monday of October has been a national holiday for close to a century, but this will be only the second year that Indigenous Peoples Day has held that designation. Last October, President Joe Biden signed it the first Presidential Proclamation of Indigenous Peoples Day, a, co- a commemoration turned holiday that began in 1977 to honor Native American history and culture. That presidential stamp of approval was the most significant boost to date of efforts refocusing a federal holiday that for decades celebrated Christopher Columbus's discovery of America. Although few Americans are arguing with the notion of being off work come Monday, Columbus Day and Indigenous Peoples Day, and I don't think that many people actually get like the day off. What is a federal holiday and then like banks take the day off? Columbus Day and Indigenous Peoples Day have prompted political debate in states, cities, and municipalities around the U.S., especially in the past decade, with some pushing against change and others favoring Indigenous Peoples Day instead. The celebrating of Indigenous Peoples Day took root in 1977 at an international conference on discrimination sponsored by the United Nations. It's grown as a day to honor Native American peoples and commemorates their histories and cultures. South Dakota was the first state to recognize the day in 1989, and the California cities of Berkeley and Santa Cruz followed. In 1990, the International Conference on Discrimination Against Indigenous Populations in the Americas, sponsored uh, sponsored by the United Nations, began to discuss replacing Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. California and Tennessee observe Native American Day in September, not conflicting with Columbus Day. Scott Stevens, the director of the Native American and Indigenous Studies program at Syracuse University, said Indigenous Peoples Day is about resilience of what past cultures have endured as much as it is about honoring heritage. For a dozen states, more than 130 local governments have chosen not to celebrate Columbus Day altogether or replace it with Indigenous Peoples Day. Many states celebrate both. 11 U.S. states celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day or a holiday of a similar name via proclamation, while 10 others treat it as an official holiday. The 10 states that observe the holiday via proclamation are Arizona, California, Iowa, Louisiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Nevada, North Carolina, Virginia, Wisconsin, and the District of Columbia. And the 10 that officially celebrate it are Alabama, Alaska, Hawaii, Maine, Nebraska, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Oregon, South Dakota, and Vermont. Some tribal groups in Oklahoma celebrate Native American Day in lieu of Columbus Day, with some groups naming the day in honor of their individual tribes. This is one of them lefty liberal commie channels, sir. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. It sure is. I can actually sum up my political beliefs with one phrase. One phrase, and that is, I would give anything, everything I own, to piss in Dan Crenshaw's open eye hole. Give me that eye, pussy, sir. So if you want to call that leftist, okay. I get called, I get called, uh, uh, commie a lot by people that I'm way more capitalist than. 
is is Jordan Peterson banging Jake? I don't think Jordan Peterson can get it up anymore. What is up, Sky Comet? How are you this evening? I am so happy to see you. J.K. Rowling and Jordan Peterson should both learn to feel embarrassment. That's all I got to say. My beliefs. All right, I'm going to hit the content warning for this. We're going to the cop. Cop stories. These are going to piss you off. You may have heard about this one. Pixar County DA finally drops the charges against a teen who was shot by a now former SAPD officer. District Attorney Joe Gonzalez said he was exercising compassionate discretion because the teen is in critical condition in the hospital. Not because he didn't do anything wrong, you know? I guess they're not admitting fault on that one. Let's watch the local news hit there on it. New developments tonight in the case involving a teen who was shot by a San Antonio police officer at a local McDonald's. The Bear County District Attorney dropping charges against the teen who is still in the hospital. Alan Kozlu walks us through the case, and we do want to warn you: the video you are about to see is disturbing. Get out of the car. This interaction last Sunday with San Antonio police officer James Brennan left 17-year-old Eric Cantu with four bullet wounds and two criminal charges, I want charges from SAPD. When the case was filed... No, they charged the kid. They charged... The, this kid did nothing wrong. He was just eating burgers in a parking lot. Did absolutely fuck all wrong. This interaction last Sunday with San Antonio police officer James Brennan left 17-year-old Eric Cantu with four bullet wounds and two criminal charges from SAPD. When the case was filed, the teenager was originally charged with uh, uh, evading with the vehicle and, and aggravated assault. Today, Bear Since, County District uh, Attorney Joe Gonzalez announced he is rejecting those charges for now, but can pursue them later, depending on the- Oh, outcome. absolutely. They Gonzalez will pay through the, the decision In part, so Cantu's family can be by his side. There's no risk of him escaping. It's not like he can get up and run away. As for- Yeah, they had him shackled. Has ...been fired after seven months on the force. Civil rights investigators are also looking at the incident. And again, I don't want to speculate. We know a deadly weapon was used. That's uh, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Uh, there are certain enhancements by the statute given uh, the officer's stature. Gonzalez says that any charges... Charge that cop. This only happened a few days ago, Chainsaw. We charge an officer with a crime. It, it is a very serious matter and we take it very seriously. But we do that because I have made a commitment to this community that there is no one that is above the law and we will hold everyone accountable. From downtown, Alan Kozlu, Ken's Five. Yeah, I, uh, I'm on Sunday through Thursday. I think this might have happened Thursday night or Wednesday night. And then I just didn't want to cover it last night because we had a uh, Iranian-American activist on to tell us about what was going on in Iran. So I just didn't feel like doing uh, cop stories after that. But I got another one for you. I'm going to hit the content warning again. <laughs> At least no one is is in the hospital uh, over this incident that I know of. But a mom is demanding an apology after police mistakenly detained her. Demanding an apology. Ramming her car. Fairfax County Police after they intentionally ran into her car over the weekend with her children inside it. Police say they were responding to an alert on the car she was driving. Northern Virginia Bureau Chief Julie Carey reports this young mom was not the person police were looking for. Of course she wasn't. Jamie Kimball gets emotional as she talks about the incident on Saturday afternoon. A video she posted of the aftermath getting thousands of views. I still am very angry and more than anything hurt because I teach my children that the police are supposed to protect us. And that, <gasps> if, they need, and that if they need anything. I'm sorry to laugh at you, ma'am. I just, I, I want to make absolutely clear, don't ever call the cops. The cops will make the situation worse. They'll show up, they'll shoot your dog. 
They'll shoot somebody you love. They'll shoot you. They ain't going to stop crime. That We've seen it time and time again. Cops are cowards. Cops are incompetent. And cops will lie even when they have no business lying. And that's Usually John Oliver has pretty shit lib takes, but John Oliver last night pointed out cops fucking lie all the time. And that is something I've been saying on this show and before I ever even had this show. Cops fucking lie even when they have no reason to. I know because I did news for years. You could, I would know for a fact that what they were telling me was not true. Have multiple eyewitnesses telling me a completely different story. The cops lie even when they have no reason to lie. Time and time again, they had absolutely no reason to lie. They're just pathological. The job attracts a certain personality type and you shouldn't trust them. You should not give them all of that power unchecked. I am sorry. That is why I am a police abolitionist. I did something has to be in their place, but we need to rebuild it from scratch because we have psychopaths with badges running around in armored tanks and automatic weapons. It's insane. What the fuck are we doing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to go on that rant, ma'am. Um, please tell your story. They need, and that if they need anything, they, they can call them for help. Jamie and her girlfriend were headed to Walmart to get groceries. Jamie's five-year-old daughter and one-year-old son in the back seat. They'd noticed a police car trailing, then pulling up alongside them on Richmond Highway. When they reached this intersection, ready to turn left into the Walmart. Fairfax County patrol cars suddenly converged, one striking Jamie's car head on. The driver in the car behind Jamie took this video. Well, I don't know what protocol is, but they drew their guns uh, at me and my friend from both sides of the car. On top of the shock, Jamie was still healing from a C-section birth just days earlier. She and her friend were handcuffed, her kids put in a police car. Once Jamie was released, asking to go to the hospital, she took and posted this video, her anger clear. They stopped the wrong person, the wrong person here on Richmond Highway, y'all. As Jamie Kimball's video circulated on social media, Fairfax County Police issued a statement explaining why they stopped the vehicle and why they thought there might be somebody dangerous inside. Police say they were responding to a felony alert they're the stupid. in Arlington County, an alert that listed the occupants as armed and dangerous. They also say the police car that hit Jamie was going less than 10 miles per hour. After Jamie was detained, officers determined she was not connected to any. I don't give a shit that you were going less than 10 miles an hour. You hit a car that is going to be expensive to repair because cars are made now to crumble in order to protect the people inside. That is probably $1,500 worth of damage at least if she's lucky. If not three, four, th- five thousand dollars, guaranteed, and the cops aren't going to pay for that. A crime. Fairfax County Police say they are conducting an administrative review of the incident. Jamie wants to know why officers didn't just use lights and siren for the stop. She wants the officer who hit her car fired, and she wants an apology. I could have lost my life. My kids could have lost their lives. Luckily, everyone in the car was in his seatbelt. Jamie expects the emotional damage will be long lasting. This was a very traumatic situation and, a, and, a, and for a long time, it, probably forever for me and my five year old, this will forever affect us. Reporting for News 4, I'm Julie Carey. Jamie Kimball tells us she's scheduled to speak to a police department representative by phone on Wednesday. I hope she speaks to an attorney in person uh, with post haste. Because I think she has a lawsuit. Unfortunately, if she ever sees money, a settlement from the the city, most likely, uh, that would be a couple of years from now. Let's go to a city that's had plenty of settlements against it. In LA. 
<laughs> there has been leaked audio that has resulted in the head of the city council having to resign. Apparently said some pretty racist shit, so... Content warning. And while Martinez has resigned as council president, protesters... Oh yeah, thank you, Chainsaw. ...making their voices loud and clear... They're demanding her resignation from the council itself. KKL Knight's Tina Patel has more reaction on the council controversy. We don't know if Nori Martinez is... Hey, Chainsaw, if you, do, if you do broadcasting, if you do streaming and shit, if I can get up with me on Discord or something. Uh, on Friday nights, we do uh, rotating guest hosts. I'd love to have you on. Home. We haven't seen anyone come in or out of the house today, but police are keeping. I have on just about anybody. Earlier this morning, they we have no standards around here to this neighborhood, so only residents could come and go. The police aren't sure if there are going to be more protests here, but they wanted to be prepared and protect neighbors. They say there has been vandalism at some past protesters hey, Justin, here. Last night, trolling? it was a peaceful group of about 50 people that showed up outside Martinez's home, holding signs and calling on the council president to resign. They say the racist remarks Martinez has heard making in the leaked audio recordings show she is unfit for office. And that's what we also heard from some protesters outside City Hall are we, today. Are we going to get to hear the audio? that Nuri Martinez, Gil Cedillo, Kevin De Leon, and Ron Herrera must resign immediately. This is a moment for us to draw a hard line in the sand. As we said, Martinez has announced her intention to step down as council president. Just before that, we had a chance to talk with council member Mitch O'Farrell. Here's what he had to say. What we all <laughs> became aware of yesterday, um, the hate speech, the racist talk, the, the transgressions, uh, the abject ultimate abuse of power um, away from the public eye uh, in a secretive space, excluding Angelinos, excluding us, uh, other council members, um, is, is unconscionable. Because today is Indigenous Peoples Day, there are no city meetings, but the city council is scheduled to meet tomorrow morning, and we will see then if any formal actions are taken against Martinez or the other council members heard in that recording. In Sun Valley, Tina Patel, KCAL 9 News. And both mayoral candidates have way. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you the audio here. Hold on. Go to Twitter. So I had it, I have it with the LA Times, but oddest thing, all the, it's like whatever the kid's name is. I'm like, it's like the oddest thing. All the, it's like black and brown on this float, and then there's this, this white guy. With a little black kid who's take a look earlier this morning. Hold, hold, hold on. They're not Bounties. doing that. Yeah, no, they're not doing the kid is bouncing off the effing wall on the floor, practically tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. And I'm just like, oh my god. Whatever the kid's name is, I'm like, it's like the oddest thing. It's like black and brown on this floor. And then there's this, this white guy. With the little black kid who's misbehaved. Este niño has no, he's, they're not doing that. Yeah, no, they're not doing, the kid is bouncing off the effing walls on the floor, practically tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. And I'm just like, oh my God. So that, that's the audio. She got in trouble over. This was Nuri Martinez. Yesterday was the president of the LA City Council and is no longer the president of the LA City Council. However, we do not have indication of whether she's going to give up her council seat. She's just no longer the president of the city council. So we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. This isn't even the only leaked audio we have tonight, and it's certainly not the only racist remarks we have. 
Holy shit. The NAACP is condemning remarks made by uh, Senator Tommy Tuberville at a Trump rally over the weekend. <laughs> NAACP denounces flat out racist remarks by GOP Senator Tommy Tuberville. Senator Tuberville's comments are flat out racist, ignorant, and utterly sickening. NAACP President Derek Johnson said in a statement, his words promote a centuries-old lie about black people that throughout history resulted in the most dangerous policies and violent attacks on our community. Johnson, who noted that the far right has pushed such racist theories, added next time the senator wants to talk about crime, he should talk about Donald Trump's hate-filled or hate-fueled rally on January 6th. 2021 and the attacks that followed. Perhaps the real criminals are in his orbit. Bullshit, we gotta go to a different link. Now, here is the comments. Some people people say, well, they're soft on crime. No, they're not soft on crime. They're pro-crime. They want crime. They want crime because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Bull Are those comments appropriate for a sitting U.S. senator, Congressman? Well, I wouldn't say it the same way, but there is a problem in our country with crime. Major cities have seen a 40 to 50 (laughs) percent. I fucking fucking right wingers. I don't even know what to say. I mean, like, I don't. I don't remember if we were on or not during the fucking YouTube. Always acts weird on Edge. I I have to ditch Edge and go back to Google. That's not even what I wanted. Though you should watch the freaking news. Freaking news is good shit. I don't even know. I don't even know what the video was. It was supposed to be. (laughs) Fuck it. It had something to do with Tuberville. I wasn't done with it, but we're moving on now. Fuck Tommy Tuberville. I try. I lived in Alabama. I tried my best to make sure he didn't get elected. I lived in Alabama when he got elected. I was so happy when Doug Jones won. I voted for Doug Jones. I was so disappointed when Tommy Tuberville won. Oh, God. I'm not high enough for this shit. I'm going to have to pack another bomb. Latest bombshell in Trump document scandal leaves New York Times reporter at a loss for words. Apparently, he was trying to blackmail the National Archives. New York Times has re- Let's hear what this reporter has to say about it. ...president to cut a deal with the National Archives over the presidential records... Hold on. New York Times has re- new reporting on an attempt by the former president to cut a deal with the National Archives over the presidential records he... No, Mox, as someone who lived in Alabama, you would you would rather you would much rather have a a Senator Nick Saban. Holy shit. You better hope Nick Nick Saban runs for Senate. <laughs> My god, that dude is awesome. Like I will like I don't know, like when 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 BLM was going on, he marched with his players. He kneeled with his players. When uh, when COVID was happening, he made everybody like his protocols were a lot stricter than what the the state's protocols were. Saban would be a way better senator. He's a like he's a super stand up guy, and I would guess like his politics are more towards the center. So, of all the people that could be senator from from Alabama, you would want Nick Saban to be the senator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like fucking Saban's a stay, Saban's an all right guy. As somebody who lived in Alabama long enough, like I lived there seven years. So and and I worked in the news, right? So like even when it wasn't football season, every other day, it was a story about what Nick Saban was doing to the team, and like fucking dude, dude is fucking cool. He won me over. <laughs> 
Yes, Tommy Tuberville is a fucking idiot and a bigot. He took from the White House. He wanted documents about the Russia probe he thought would prove he was wronged by the FBI. So, according to the New York Times, they became his bargaining chip. Quote, in exchange for those documents, Mr. Trump told advisors he would return to the National Archives the boxes and material he had taken to Mar-a-Lago. Mr. Trump's aides never pursued the idea. Joining me now is New York Times Washington correspondent Michael Schmidt. He is bylined on this reporting. He's also the author of the book, Donald Trump versus the United States. All right, so he wanted to make a trade. What does this reveal to you about the way Donald Trump was seeing these documents that he had and, and what he could get out of the United States government? For us, the idea that Trump could take boxes and negotiate them for classified documents that the archives didn't want to give him. Uh so maybe I was just, I was still thinking about Nick Saban, but like I did not catch what the evidence was that they had for this claim. The Times has re new reporting on an attempt by the former president to cut a deal with the National Archives over the presidential records he took from the White House. He wanted documents about the Russia probe he thought would prove he was wronged by the FBI. So, according to the New York Times, yeah. they became his bargaining chip. Quote, in exchange for those documents, Mr. Trump told advisors he would return to the National Archives the boxes and material he had taken to Mar-a-Lago. Mr. Trump's aides never pursued the idea. Joining me now is New York Times Washington correspondent Michael Schmidt. He is bylined on this reporting. He's also the author of the book, Donald Trump versus the United States. All oh, right, God, so it's another ad for a trade. book. I just I mean, want to point that out every time that we do this. Donald Trump was seeing these documents that he had and, and what he could get out of the United States government. For us, the idea that Trump could take boxes and negotiate them for classified documents that the archives didn't want to give him about the Russia investigation, not that they didn't want to give him, but they didn't think that he had the people around him to handle them, is just another example of how Trump has sort of approached all of these investigations. This is another example of investigative journalism for profit where you've apparently had this information that would have been pertinent to us and you've been sitting on it for months just so you can sell a book at least weeks and this is the kind of this is the kind of bullshit that I I can't stand about the media and I don't I don't like uh, shows like Breaking Points, it's all like, oh, the media's doing this. Let's make fun of CNN. Blah, 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 blah. The New York Times. Taylor Lorenz did this. I get so sick of that fucking bullshit. But I do want to point out the missteps that the media makes. Because I do take, a, as somebody who has been in the media for over 20 years now, I take up for the media a lot. But this kind of bullshit pisses me off. He was entertaining outlandish ideas, ideas that were not, uh, you know, certainly based in typical reality of what you can and cannot do. The idea that if you had materials that were government records and you could use them as a bargaining chip, um, I, you know, it's just it, it's the fuck Woodward for putting out his books too. And the, the best one we could come up with is outlandish. But in the story, what we do is we chronicle that not only did he fit a pattern of how he... Also, Mox, I don't know if I've, I've told you good evening. ...investigation where he entertains crazy, crazy thoughts, but he also, he misled his own aides. He pushed them to take actions that he was unwilling to take himself. And that, in turn, exposed the aides and the lawyers and the representatives that were working for him... Uh, that increased their own legal ex exposure. And with Trump, it's a story that time and time again repeats itself. His lawyers sometimes have to hire their own lawyers. Uh, let's play Donald Trump at a rally last night. Here's what he said about the documents. I had a small number of boxes in storage at Mar-a-Lago guarded by Secret Service and my people and everybody. I mean, it's safe. But there is no crime. It's not a crime. <laughs> and... They should give me immediately back everything that they've taken from me because it's mine. 
it's mine, he says. I mean, we've seen this before, Michael. He will get accused of something, and then he'll come out and he'll say, yeah, I did it. It's not a problem. It's not a crime. Yeah, it's mine is something that he was saying behind the scenes in the year and a half after he left office as the National Archives and the Justice Department were pushing for these materials to come back. It's a certainly... Um, uh, a, a true lack of understanding of how presidential records work, um, what you can and cannot do with them, who truly owns them. Um, obviously very similar to the way that he approached the powers of the presidency. He thought that the attorney general was a lawyer who worked for him that was there uh, essentially to defend him and to to protect him. Yeah, that's, that's why he um, yeeted so, Jeff so Sessions so quickly. Similar themes that sort of build on each other in the Trump story. Uh, obviously, this is different uh, than, than the other ones, but there are these patterns that emerge. And here he is again going out publicly and saying these things. And as a prosecutor, I'm not even sure how you look at them because he has said so many different things about this issue that <laughs> he's that incriminated himself so many different times. And now he's admitting, yes, he did have the documents. Originally, the documents were planted by the FBI. That was the narrative that he was pushing. So I just don't know where you begin if you're a prosecutor uh, to understand his public statements because they're just so all over the place. Michael Schmidt, Michael. Very astute analysis, I would say. <laughs> How do you even start? Uh, apparently, we got some leaked audio from Kevin McCarthy. Maybe you start with uh, the people around Trump. I don't even know what this is about yet. So, I guess we're getting into the January 6th shit. Secret audio of McCarthy's claim about Trump call on January 6th. Revealing tapes he secretly recorded while meeting with House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy after the insurrection at the Capitol. Fanone writes about the tapes in his new memoir. Fanone is hawking a book now. This is this is too much for me because that's I I actually saw the headline about the the secret Fanone tapes or whatever the fuck, and I clicked on the story and it was just about in his new book. And I immediately clicked off of it. And my God, they got they got to me anyway. They got to me anyway. All right, let's hear what you got to say. Saying, as I entered the Capitol, I did what I always did when I went on a risky op. I hit the record button on my iPhone and stuffed it in my pocket. Fanon was one of the officers attacked by Trump supporters during the riot. He was severely beaten. He suffered a heart attack as well as a traumatic brain injury. And we're going to speak to him shortly. First, though, let's get to CNN's Whitney Wilde. Who gives a shit what she has to say? Audio. Tell us about this. Well, Brianna, we knew that these meetings were happening. There was video of, of uh, Harry John and Michael Fanone, as well as Gladys Sicknick, on the Capitol that day. But we've never been able to go inside and hear what these lawmakers told uh, these two officers, as well as the mother of an officer who died after that attack. In their own words, Michael Fanone bringing us those lawmakers. A secretly recorded meeting with House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy shows the lengths two officers protecting the Capitol on January 6th went to try to persuade him to take action against members spreading falsehoods about the attack. What I found like most distressing is the comments made by, um, unfortunately, uh, as a lifelong Republican uh, myself, coming from Republican lawmakers. Uh, specifically people like Andrew Clyde, uh, who have made statements about January 6th, which were, I mean, not just shocking, but disgraceful. Referring to January 6th as a regular tour day at the Capitol. Uh, I mean, what I see happening here is I see lawmakers who don't believe that uh, January 6th is politically advantageous to them. Nobody buys it. It's crap. It's crap. It's disgraceful. The meeting was legally recorded in June 2021 by then DC Metropolitan Police Officer Michael Fanone. Fanone calls on McCarthy to Take denounce the 21 must be a one way state against granting congressional gold medals to those who defended the Capitol. Who needs a break? Let's get some fresh guys up front. Well, it was probably in DC. Since then has been horrific. It's hell on earth. 
I am not a political person. I do not enjoy my time here on Capitol Hill. I would much rather be sitting at home with my daughters drinking a cold beer. But instead, I feel a, an extension of my service on January 6th to be up here writing this wrong. The meeting was also attended by Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn and Gladys Sicknick, the mother of Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who died from multiple strokes after the January 6th attack. McCarthy tells him he wants to see Justice Zero Sir. party consent. Benone then urges McCarthy to take the House Select Committee investigating the Capitol attack seriously. I'm asking you to agree to everybody recording everything the special committee seriously appointing serious people to that committee uh, who will not be obstructionists uh, and who will allow you know the investigation to be done in law enforcement we when we when, right when we get involved in an investigation that we don't care about we assign the biggest humps I to participate never watch me on any of my appointments yeah, I mean, uh, but you understand, I, 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 you're an intelligent man, Mr. McCarthy. I'm asking, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Izzy. McCarthy did appoint five Republicans to the committee. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi rejected two of the choices because they objected to the certification of the 2020 election. McCarthy pulled the other three. Just days after the meeting on July 1st, McCarthy said this. It would be shocking to me for anybody from a party on the other side to come and want to accept a position Democrat for me, and it'd be shocking to me to have a Republican to go to a Speaker Pelosi, of all people, to accept a committee assignment. In the recording, Fanon reminds McCarthy in the meeting how dangerous this day was for McCarthy and his staff, as seen by surveillance video of his staff fleeing their offices. He also brings up the phone call McCarthy had with then-President Trump urging him to act, a call that other Republican lawmakers said devolved into a shouting match. The president's statements that day were BS, saying, I mean, you know, you were on the phone with him. While you were on the phone with him, I was getting... Well, when are Trump's statements BS? My life. The, the way that he, you know, saying this is what happens <laughs> when you steal an election. Go home. I love you. What the f*** is that? You know that, man? that came from the president of the United States. McCarthy defended Trump at various points in the meeting. He wasn't watching TV, he wasn't with his family. He knew what was going on. He knew what was going on. He knew that we'll fight him for hours and hours and hours. You know, you just you know, uh, you know. McCarthy just lied there. I guess I guess <laughs> I don't know I wasn't there, but I'm just telling you from my phone call, I don't know that he did know that significant moment there. Uh, you know, Brianna, it's one thing to, you know, for Mike, you see Mike Fanon on our air a lot, and it's one thing for someone to come out publicly, uh, you know, and voice their opinions. But what Fanon did was he told those people in, you know, in this private meeting to their face how he really felt. He had the nerve to do that. It was juicy. I'm glad we, I'm glad we listened to that. You know, and he, and he really did it. He took them to task. And at this point, what he has tried to do over the last, you know, what, 18 months or so is show where people are flip-flopping on when it is a really important issue and making it uh, a core value for him uh, to call people out when their narrative is changing and hold them accountable to the truth. Yeah, trying to right a wrong, as he said in his discussion with Kevin McCarthy. Whitney, thank you so much for taking us through that. We appreciate it. And joining us now is the author of Hold the Line, The Insurrection and One Cop's Battle for America's Soul, which is out in bookstores. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think we've heard what we need to hear. Let's talk about this group that's apparently targeting airports. Now, the website for Hartsfield Jackson International Airport has been down throughout the morning. ABC News reports there was a, a Russian cyber attack on multiple U.S. airport sites. And Channel 2 consumer investigator Justin Gray. Interesting. Airport where he's gathering the very latest information on this. Justin, what do you know? I. Russian? I don't know that Russia. Like, they kind of got their plate full right now. I. I like. I would. But. It could be an independent group that is based in Russia or something like that that is doing the hacking. Probably a ransom attempt. Those are becoming far more common now. 
Well, Fred, I was able to log in here on my laptop just in the past couple of minutes, but our producer Savannah back there in the control room, she just tried to log on. The computer there could not get on, so it remains hit and miss. In fact, your laptop uh, looks to be powered off, sir. Saying everything was back in action, they deleted the tweet they put out because it seems like they're still having trouble keeping the website consistently available to customers. And you know, travelers did have some issues this morning if they jumped on there trying to check on parking here at the airport or check those TSA wait lines. Instead, they found an error message. Airport officials, though, tell us that this is in no way impacting. That's what I was thinking of DNS attack. The They're now investigating the outage, but ABC News tells us they confirmed with a senior administration official that some of the nation's largest airports have been targeted for cyber attacks today by an attacker within the Russian Federation. Now, important to point out, the systems targeted do not handle air traffic control or internal airline communication or anything related to it just makes it a pain in the ass for the customers you might remember that the city of atlanta was hit by a cyber attack back in 2018 that crippled city services here at their airport they responded to that back then by shutting down the wi-fi now city and airport officials will not confirm to us today whether this was in fact a cyber attack they're just saying at the moment they're investigating again though ABC News confirming. An OMG, war. yes, you did. That was seven o'clock Eastern. We came on early to cover that. The country from inside the Russian Federation. You can head to the YouTube and you can watch. You can watch the replay of the debate. Channel Two Action News. Okay, Justin, thank you very much. You mentioned that you're back on. You were able to get on. I just tried. I can't get on from here, so we'll see what ha what develops. And then the local news has just evolved into like, I can't get on this website. Can you get on this website? Twitter's down right now. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Cable news is nothing but promos for people's books. Local news is, can I get on this website right now? We truly are in a hellscape of late stage capitalism. The hard-hitting news is on Twitch with the guy with the troll head. <laughs> oh my god. But even I, even I've got to, I got to do this kind of shit. Uh, I got a Biden gaffe for you. He's got two words for you. On Friday, President Joe Biden gave remarks on quote. It's not suck it. the economy from the bottom up and middle out in Hagerstown, Maryland. During his speech, the president made a gaffe saying, quote, let me start off with two words, made in America. Last month, Biden made another cringeworthy gaffe when he called out, where's Jackie at a White House event. Despite the fact that the Republican Congresswoman Jackie will in a car accident in August. Ma'am, I wanted the video. Please show me the video. Let me start off with two words. Made in America. <laughs> Made in America. And that's not how Now, perhaps some of you who were here for the debate when Tim Ryan was talking about Peter Thiel but not saying his name. I said, I've got two words for you. Peter fucking Till. Maybe some of you caught my joke. And it was it was about Joe Biden. That's what I was joking about. Made in America. And that's not hyperbole. I'm not joking about that, as you know. And I want to say up front, and the management here is, understands, and I'm proud of them, I'm a union guy. And I tell you what, I made it real clear everybody was speaking to the National Chamber of Commerce or the Business Roundtable. The reason I'm the most pro-union president in American history is because you're the single best workers in the world. I don't know about American history, sir. You know, a lot of people think that you just show up and you got a job. How about those three, four, But five, also the bar was incredibly low. But thank you. Thank you. I know Fox News is only playing the, the gaff part of that. But thank you for talking about unions and being pro-union. Thank you, right-wing media, for pointing out this speech to me so I can give them props on promoting unions. Shove it, Fox News.
Uh, one of the stars from Law and Order got into it with Congressman Lauren Boebert, who apparently I didn't, I haven't had a chance to cover this. Apparently, her race is incredibly tight now. That just this unknown Democratic, I can't even tell you what his name is, and I know I know some some weird challengers like Marcus Flowers going up against Marjorie Taylor Greene in Georgia, but I don't even know who the Democratic challenger is for Lauren, Lauren Boebert, but polls show he has a shot now. On order star Chris Maloney in a Twitter spat with former Trump admin official Stephen Miller. Stevie, stick to writing fascist speeches, he said. Hold on, I thought I had the, uh, I'd rather read from the, the deadline version of this. Law and Order star Chris Maloney in a Twitter spat with former Trump admin official Stephen Miller. Oh, it's still not showing the fucking tweets. And I'm suspended from Twitter. So, Chris Maloney was trying to dunk on Lauren Boebert. She said two words, let's go Brandon. Making a joke about the Biden speech that uh, we just saw a clip from. Chris Maloney said there's got to be a stupid prize GOP reps are competing for. Stephen Miller tried to clap back. Turns out the guy with the most unwatchable Law & Order spinoff is a very angry and very ignorant far-left ideologue. If he had any decency or self-respect, he'd apologize to the congresswoman unless he still can't grasp how he's embarrassed himself. I, I, this last time I got booted from the Twitter, uh, it would be probably for, uh, being a ban evader because I've been banned. I think this is my actual Twitter that you were looking at right here. The one I've, I've had. Nope, nope, nope. This was another one. The different, that's a different Twitter. (laughs) I've had multiple. They keep getting me. Chris Maloney responded back uh, when Nosferatu attempts shade. Stevie, stick to writing fascist speeches. Stephen Miller even tried to clap back again. You publicly owned yourself while denigrating a member of Congress. The classy and decent move would be to delete the tweet and apologize, but it's clear class and decency, much like acting ability or traits you lack. Wow, wow. I've, I've got to hand it to Miller. No wonder he's a speechwriter. It was a good clap back. Or, as Chris Maloney responds back, because I'm not up on everything Biden, I missed the joke, but the congressman, uh, rep, Kong rep, I guess, is so reliably ignorant, her tweet would make complete sense. And save the classy and decent suggestion, those are two things you and your bloat know nothing about. Come on, man! I, Twitter don't like me. Hopefully, when Musk takes over, he gives me my, my Twitter back. <laughs> I don't, it kind of makes me want to watch his Law & Order episodes or whatever, his, his spinoff. Stephen Miller is one of those people that's been like the, the military's gone woke kind of motherfuckers. After a general's clash with Fox News' Tucker Carlson, soldiers are worried that the U.S. Army has gone full MAGA. 
Michael Grinston, the Sergeant Major of the Army, said he is steadfast in his commitment to craft a more inclusive environment for women in the military after a watchdog investigation reportedly criticized a senior officer for rebuking attacks on service women. Task and Purpose last Wednesday first disclosed the details of an Inspector General investigation of Major General Patrick Donahoe an armor uh, officer that reportedly found his use of Twitter to be inappropriate after he blasted a segment from Fox News' Tucker Carlson attacking the Army for allowing pregnant women to serve. Donahoe continued to engage with critical commentators on social media. Donahoe intended to retire in July, but has been assigned as a special assistant to the Army's Training and Doctrine Command. Internally or not, this whole thing showed women that we are not worth defending, one non-commissioned officer told Military.com. If he can get slapped for this, why would anyone defend women in public? Army officials haven't decided Donahoe's fate, which could include a reduction in rank for speaking out against Tucker Carlson. Army officials haven't decided Donahoe's fate, which could include a reduction in rank, but the launch of the investigation itself was seen as a gut punch to those who have advocated supporting female soldiers. To some, scrutinizing Donahoe's defense of women online is an example of the military bending the knee to right-wing media. Merkin, good evening. Crayon-eating motherfuckers indeed. Grinston posted a message on Twitter last Thursday that seemed to refer to the swirling controversy. Let me be absolutely clear, I stand with our women in uniform. Your leaders and I will continue to defend our people vigorously and thank you all for choosing to serve in a time where many do not. You are our greatest strength and most strategic advantage. That's woke to Tucker Carlson. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. News of the investigation comes as more attention is paid to some of the problems female troops have long faced. And as women, including Army Secretary Christine Warmoth, increasingly take leadership roles. And one of the problems, it, it may not get into it here in the Insider article, or it may get into it, is the fucking rape of females. In the military, the rape of men, too. They don't talk enough about that, and men don't report that enough in the military. It goes way underreported. Rape in military in general is a problem of males and uh, particularly of females. Just want to point that out. The, The numbers of women who get raped in the military are absolutely appalling. I should have hit the content warning before talking about this. But I know for a fact that the men who get raped in the military go completely underreported. Severely underreported. Justin here with the T. The military has adopted new policies designed to boost the quality of life for female soldiers, including a total revamp of parenthood policies, such as making it easier for women to pump breast milk on duty and relaxing grooming standards to allow them to have ponytails and braids. Those efforts were largely led by mid-ranking women in the service, a signal that top leaders are listening to their concerns. The controversy for Donahoe originated in March of 2021 when Carlson blasted the Defense Department for efforts to make military service more appealing and accommodating to women, such as developing maternity uniforms. Oh, I remember when he bitched about that. Perhaps we should have the men in military out there sunning their balls, Tucker. Maybe that'd make them more manly. This segment that uh, served as a flashpoint for right-wing attacks on the military, labeling the armed services as woke. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. We're so fixated on diversity and inclusion that it has abandoned its priorities. It's an accusation without evidence that has surfaced since President Joe Biden took office. I can assure you, just like the economy, any any effect that presidents have on the military, those changes take a long time to take effect. Maybe even longer than uh, 
the effect on the economy that presidents have. I usually say give it two to three years to see the uh, the effect presidents have on the economy. I would say they don't have that much influence over the military, to be honest with you. Carlson was likely referring to an International Women's Day speech by Biden that same month in which he talked about key female leaders in the military, including General Laura Richardson, who had been recently nominated to head the U.S. Southern Command. Although the president did not suggest that the military needed to be more feminine, nor did he use the word during the address. In a response, Donahoe shared a video on Twitter of him conducting reenlistment ceremony. Let's take a look at this video. I don't know. Listen, can we can we get the Carlson segment? Oh no, that's what that's what uh, Tucker was referring to. This was the video that Donahoe posted. This is me yesterday conducting a reenlistment for one of the tens of thousands of women who serve uh, in our army. Just a reminder that Tucker Carlson couldn't be more wrong. I, Susan, I'm Leah Perona, do solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will support and defend, and I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. The orders of the officers appointed over me. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. I can say that this is a badass shot just because, like, we're staring down the barrel of a tank. So help me go. And how dare they fist bump and take up COVID protocols, right? So that was the video that he shared in response to Tucker Carlson. Other army leaders backed the sentiment, including Grinston, who said on Twitter, women lead our most lethal units with character. They will dominate any future battlefield we're called to fight on. Tucker Carlson's words are divisive, don't reflect our values. Grinston is seemingly not under investigation, according to multiple sources familiar with the matter. He is set to retire in roughly a year. But those tweets, especially from Donahoe, captured the ire of partisan show hosts on Fox News, as well as Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. Army investigators said Donahoe's behavior on Twitter exhibited poor judgment, according to Task and Purposes reporting. Donahoe was an avid user of social media at a time when most military leaders were weary of some of the risk of being active in the military community online. At an Army conference in 2019, he argued the risks were overblown and that being communicative is critical to building relationships with soldiers, journalists, and other stakeholders. The richness of the discussion outweighs the risks, Donahoe said. Sounds like a pretty American value to me. Donahoe's clash with Fox News in the ensuing investigation might make it even more difficult for leaders in the service to communicate online in the future, but in the short term, and Tucker is supposedly one of those free speech advocates, uh, but in the short term, the controversy is creating confusion, according to Catherine Kazminsky a senior fellow and director of the Military Veterans and Society Program at the Center for a New American Security. There is unclear policy and guidance on social media use, she said. Among the general officer corps, there tend to be difficult expectations. Oh, just an interesting story I wanted to highlight. Now we're going to go over to, I might need a content warning for violence on this one. Uh, truth is light. Welcome. Thank you for being a freaking follower. Truth is light. So this is one of those religious types that you probably want to stay away from. (laughs) Christian preacher says that if God tells you to kill somebody, you should probably do it. Oh, weird. Do you think of people that commit murder and then state, God told me to do it? Um, Well, I'm going to say something controversial that will absolutely delight atheists because they like to take, not all atheists, some, some, 
Well, sir, well, sir, uh, here I am. You got me. The headline got me. What you got to say? Lay it on me, preacher boy. Internet atheists like to take things out of context and use it to uh, make me look bad. I don't care. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm going to play the whole thing. Not like anything changed. Um, if anything, I, I'm just glad people like hate follow me. <laughs> like, oh, at least that's there. You know, maybe they're hearing the gospel. Maybe God willing, there's there's like some truth of Christ that will will eke through there. You know, so I'm going to say something here. Um, if God really told them to do it, then they were right. If God didn't tell them to do it, then they were wrong. And well, how do I take you out of context on that one, sir? Who's blaming God, which just makes it worse. God does have a right to tell. Now, let me now let me give an analogy that might help people swallow this better because I, I feel the rejection that people would have to this naturally. Um, let's say that um, America gets involved in a in a uh, a just war. Right. Or let's not even, let's not even do that. Let's just say that you have a, I mean, that's a, that's a crazy hypothetical. Like when have we gotten involved in a just war stir? You might be able to make an argument for world war two with me, but like the thing I'm going to argue back is like, we kind of funded the Nazis. <laughs> the American right wing kind of funded the Nazis. So kind of a wash on that one, isn't it? What just war are we talking about here? A police officer who um, is is getting involved in some some kind of like school, horrible school shooting type thing, right? And he gets permission from the government and from the the local police department and all that that when he sees a person on campus with a gun, he just opens fire. Okay, that's not murder. Okay, murder is a very specific definition. It means the unlawful taking of a life. The reason I know that off the top of my head is I had to say it to so many pro-lifers. Because like, they're like, abortion is murder! And like, no, technically that's a legal term. It is not murder 100%. Like, murder is the unlawful taking of a life. You have to be found guilty in a court of law of murder. Taking a life of a, a cop in a school shooting situation, supposedly... That is a lawful taking of a life. It's not murder. However, I mean, we see cops murder people all the time. And in school shooting situations, we see them not do jack all. So your hypothetical is real bullshit over here. And so he shoots them. And then someone's like, how dare you shoot that that person? And he goes, well, like the government told me to. There's an element of this that that really is the facts. Like the government actually just gave him a badge and a gun and approved him and gave him policies that he's supposed to operate by. And so in a sense, the government just told him to. And that is an actual defense. Like if, if that wasn't in place, then you'd have Unfortunately, to- Unfortunately, once again, I'm like getting into technicalities here. Like the government has told cops that they have no duty to protect anybody out here, first of all. Like, their discretion to shoot somebody is completely on them, it seems. And it very rarely do we get justice when they do murder people. I mean, we saw that in the story that we covered at the top of the show, the top of the, the news portion of the show, where they shot the kid that was just sitting there eating a burger in his car. They charged him! They charged him, motherfucker! But also, this is not the point. He's he's trying to make a, 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 a ass backwards analogy to justify murder. He's not doing a good job. And the thing that he said earlier about if God legitimately told somebody to kill somebody, that is justifiable. That makes you batshit crazy and fucking dangerous, dude. Fuck off. Amen. If some of you are new here, I'll go ahead and sum up my political leanings for you. I tried to do this ever so often for the new people. I would give anything, anything in the world to piss in Dan Crenshaw's open eye hole. Give me that eye pussy. No, 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 no. Slap that who jazz. <laughs> Thank you for being here. And like, no, voting for, uh, your vote is strategic. 
and I, I like I hate having to keep going over this. If people want to start third parties at like the local level, I'm I'm totally down with that. But when we're talking about like the congressional, the federal level, Senate and 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 presidential, like all we got, all the only hope we've got is to take over the Democratic Party. But you can't just expect to to vote once if if you lean towards a leftist position. Perhaps you don't lean towards a leftist position. Perhaps you you are somebody that maybe once identified with the Democrats and feel that they are going too far left, and you identify more with the Republican position. If so, fuck you then. Like you, you don't tell us what to do with our party. Right, that eye pussy. <laughs> Would you like to talk about it? Slap that huge ass. I, I have not had the phone lines uh, open. Cognitive mess of a president. Come on, man. Perhaps you just joined us here on the show, but like I covered the Biden gaffe. But also I listened to what an, another couple minutes of that speech. And he spoke very eloquently about uh, unions. So perhaps you should watch the entire show. Because I made multiple jokes about Biden. Earlier in the debate, I was like, I got three, or I got two words for you. Peter fucking Till. Dude, if you think Democrats are socialists, then, like, nobody should listen to you about anything. If you, th- you think Joe Biden, who once upon a time was called the senator from MBNA, if you're too young to know what MBNA was, it was a credit card company that was based in Delaware... He was bought and paid for by the credit card companies and Wall Street. A lot of a lot of financial institutions are located in Delaware, specifically because of the policies that Joe Biden has instigated. Uh, perhaps you don't know what socialist means, but if you're bought and paid for by the credit card companies and Wall Street, you are the antithesis of a socialist. So learn what fucking words mean before you go around using them. It's just further proof that right-wingers are goddamn morons. Welcome to the Troll Patrol. Thank you for being here. Yeah, and we we totally take punches at Biden when it's warranted and we we cheer Biden on when it's when it's deserved. Even the other day when I was giving him props on uh, the the pardons of federal marijuana possession, I brought up that he was one of the authors of the crime bill. We always put things in perspective here on this show. I can't do that voice. I wanted to do the Apu voice. I love Apu. I love old school Simpsons, but I understand. You got to change with the times. You got to cave to the woke moralists. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. For tonight's animal video, always end the show with an animal video. Uh, Tonight's is a doozy. Enjoy this one. We're going to watch a man tame an alligator (laughs) with marshmallow treats. I do need to check in with the rail workers. We covered that when they first went on strike. I value my arm and my finger. I, I have not gotten an update on that. Ida, good evening. Oh, Reagan was far. Reagan uh, more than likely didn't know where he was at most of his second term. Uh, I've I've read multiple sources say that about Ronald Reagan. The, the Alzheimer's had kicked in pretty hard. And you hate to make fun of somebody like that, but also like, Ugh. but Reagan was also at a time when when presidents' images were far more crafted. It was really during the '90s and the age of the 24-hour news cycle, the Drudge Report. Uh, Bill Clinton, like he 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 didn't get to get away with a lot of things that uh, presidents in the past got away with. And and pff, the current age is something to behold of media. Wow.
Reagan was indeed one of the worst presidents we've ever had. His his effect is still reverberating throughout the economy. I've got some charts here that explain it pretty uh, pretty thoroughly. Here is the percent increase since 1970 the annual cost to attend a university in Illinois. The median uh, household income in Illinois and the mini- and the minimum wage in Illinois. Here's where Ronald Reagan took office. Illinois, just an example state. United States debt in 2014 dollars and as a percent of GDP. Huh, that line switches places during the Reagan administration. Odd. I bet that's just a coincidence. Oh, here's life expectancy versus healthcare spending over time from 1970 to 2014. How did that uncouple during the Reagan administration? That's weird. That's weird. I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Here is the total public debt as a percent of gross domestic product. Weird that number just skyrockets. When Reagan takes office, here is incarcerated Americans from 1920 to 2014. There's where Reagan took office. Once again, I'm sure it's just a coincidence. The top marginal tax rate from 1966 to 2014. And I really don't like this chart. And a lot of those charts you could accuse of being deceptive because of the time frame they take. And this one I would say is deceptive because if we go back just a few more years, the top marginal tax rate is up here. It's up here. It's up here. <laughs> I think it's kind of deceptive because it makes the top marginal tax rate look kind of uh, uh, a lot smaller than what it was back here uh, in the 50s under Eisenhower, who lowered it to like 96%. This is the top marginal tax rate when Reagan took office. Loop. I'm sure all of those things are just a coincidence that Reagan had absolutely nothing to do with that. As always, I end the show with an animal video. It's not always a cuddly animal video, but sometimes it is. If you guys are just joining in, usually we're doing a news countdown kind of show news rundown of the day oh they rejected it oh fuck yeah mox we're gonna get into that tomorrow i was hoping they would when we did the story originally uh when we we were coming up on the strike what it was like the second week of september the actual union seemed like they weren't cool with the deal there was a cooling off period and it was about a month, so this is about the time that we would hear a, a update on that. We will get into all that tomorrow. Here's your animal video for the day. Dude tames a alligator with some marshmallows. Oh, we got sound on this. What sound? Petting the motherfucker! <laughs> no, no. I value my arm and my finger. Dustin, good evening. I didn't know alligators like mustard or marshmallows. He's just shaking the bag at him. It's coming just like a pet would. He booped a snoot. I ain't booping no snoot. Okay, if you're watching on Twitch, it is um Christina's birthday. So we're going to head over to Cosmopolitics and say happy birthday to Christina. I can't believe he keeps he keeps fucking boobing the snoot. <laughs> Got to be I don't know where this is at. You would think it's in Florida. Florida man tames alligator. 
Of course it's Florida. <laughs> they celebrated their 40th anniversary by going and taming an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you're watching on Twitch or heading over to Cosmopolitics, it is Christina's birthday. Do you tell her happy birthday. Go ahead, light one up, tip one back. It's all right to have a little fun before you hit the sack. I'm Justin Freakin. We will see you tomorrow night on the Troll Patrol live. <laughs>